Welcome to paragraph 3.4 about climate change in Europe, and this is part of the chapter about energy transition. Um, what are we going to talk about today? I want to look with you at the implication of climate change for Europe. Um, I want to look at the regional differences, or what regional, the regional differences do we see? Uh, what is the effect on coastal areas? And what is the European Union policy against climate change at this point in time? And at the end, we will look at climate adaptation. But first, the implication of climate change for Europe. Well, one of the important things with climate change is the rising temperature. And when you're looking at a rising temperature, you might know that glaciers are going to melt. So that means that less surface of the, of the Earth is covered in snow, so there is less reflection. And this is what we call the albedo effect. What is the albedo effect? That is the reflecting um, surface which actually um, sends back radiation from the sun into the atmosphere. And snow does not save the temperature, so it does not um, absorb the rays of sunlight. It reflects them back. But when that glacier is melting, and rocks become visible, these rocks absorb the energy from the sun, they get warmer and then uh, again more snow will melt. So that is a process that causes rising temperature. And of course rising temperatures are not a big problem in uh, populated areas. When you're going to look at a city um, with many inhabitants, um, of course with a higher, temperature, uh, a higher temperature the chance that more people die is bigger because of heart failure, overheating, all kind of things that um, can happen when the temperature gets too high. And of course, other things can happen. Um, when the temperature in the European Union rises, tropical species of insects and, and new uh, virus and bacteria can come over from other regions on our planet. And um, well, they are a risk for us because um, we can stand these species and we can get ill and of course we can die because of these um, insects and can die because of the bacteria that are new. So that's a big problem and you see it and when you're talking about the um, tiger mosquito, which is a big problem in tropical areas, you might have noticed that these mosquitoes already are in Europe. So that means that in the future they can transfer certain bacteria and and illnesses from other countries to us with a result that yeah, there is a possibility that people um, will die earlier. Another problem is that there will be less usable farmland because of the drought and the salinization. Salinization is a big problem in coastal areas because um, it cuts in contact with the sea and of course the water evaporates but the salt remains so the the surface will get saltier and the more salt in the bottom in the in the surface in the soil um, the bigger the problems with our crops because crops don't grow on salty uh, soil so that is a problem as well um, what happens is that people tend to use mere um, a mere of sweet water to um, get their crops growing, of course, and when you are using a lot of fresh water, which contains a little bit of salt, all the fresh water contains the, these minerals, um, except for rainwater. The problem is that when that water evaporates, the salt remains in the soil as well, so that you can get salinization in areas which do not contact with, uh, the sea area, the, the coastal areas. So there are two possibilities about salinization which actually are devastating for the planet. Well, then about temperature rise. In Europe, the temperature did rise faster than elsewhere, 1.3 degrees since 1850. Um, and that, oh, there's something in Dutch in there, I, I see. Well, since the Industrial Revolution, when it, start, it started in 1850, uh, the temperature did rise about 1.3 degrees Celsius, and that is a lot. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're looking at this graph, you might see that there's a big difference in temperature 
before and after the Industrial Revolution. And then you can look at the regional differences. Um, one of the things that happens with climate change is that southern climate zones will move to the north. That means that the Mediterranean climate, the Mediterranean Sea, the climate in Italy and in Spain and in France, will move to the north. That means that the temperature and the climate that we know here could change in the Mediterranean climate later on. And of course, mountain ranges move upwards, not, not to hills itself, but the temperature there. So that means that the, the higher you come, the colder it gets. But at, certain, at a certain point, the temperature um, does affect, for example, the glaciers or uh, the plants that grow there. So that gives problems as well. So... Which regions in Europe are the most vulnerable? Well, of course, as I told you before, the river and coastal plains, because salinization is a problem, but with the sea level rise, of course, they could submerge into water, and that's something which we, of course, do not want. Well, the Mediterranean region has a problem. The problem there is that there isn't enough rain, so drought is a big problem there. Uh, mountain ranges, here you see that because of the rising temperature, species tend to move upwards, but they can't live there because there isn't any food, um, they will get extinct, all that kind of things. And of course, the polar areas, we already see that there is not as much ice on the North Pole as there was many years ago. And of course, it isn't a problem because ice on the North Pole float, floats into wa in the water, so that means that it does not give that enormous sea level rise when it melts, but if the ice is on Greenland or on Antarctica, which is, is, is continent, and it melts, then that water gets added to the sea. And then we do have a big problem because the sea level is rising and of course the lower parts of Europe will uh, become uh, pretty unhabitable. On this map you can see what happens, and it's a bit strange You see that there are capitals of cities in other countries. What they think, the, the scientists think, is that these um, cities will get the temperature which is visible on this map. So that means that a city like Paris, which originally was um, in a, a climate which is the same as, as ours, a CF climate, which means that it is... Um, a moderate climate with, with rain through all the year can change into a Mediterranean uh, climate like we do have in Spain. And that, that happens, of course, because of the moving of these climate zones. And you already can see that in the Netherlands. This year was OK, but last year, in October, it was pretty warm. And during the summer, there was not a lot of rain. And that is exactly what the Mediterranean climate shows us. It does have a wet and quite soft winter, which means there's not a lot of frost. And during the summers, it is hot and dry. So that's exactly what we are noticing in our region for the last couple of years. Only this year, it was different because of the fact that there was a lot of rain. So that is different. But you see the changes there. They are already coming. So, yes, what is going to happen to us in the future? Um, well, I suppose that if we think about this, that in the future, one of the biggest changes will be the fact that during the summer there is less water available. So what is the effect on coastal areas? Well, most of the, uh, the European Union inhabitants live close to coastal areas, less than 50 kilometers. And of course, a part of the European Union is below sea level, like the Netherlands. With that in mind, many important ports, like the port of Amsterdam, of Rotterdam, Antwerp, uh, Hamburg, which are important economic locations, are below sea level. And with that in mind, it becomes pretty impossible to use these ports with a rising sea level. And of course, due to a rising sea level, Fresh water gets pushed away, and salinization can occur. Well, what is the European Union policy against climate change? Well, they want to lower the CO2 emissions by 40% in comparison to 1990 by 2030. 
and 27 of the energy production should be renewable or durable. We all have to use less energy. And the European Union, European Union wants us to use 30% less. And that's a lot and it's difficult because during those heat summers we tend to use more energy, more electricity for the air conditioning. And even more important transport should be durable. Um, and that is difficult because it's pretty expensive for companies to buy, for example, electric vehicles that they can use in their transport. And of course that energy which is needed for these electric vehicles um, is produced by power plants which might use um, energy from fossil sources, so that does not work at all. Very important on the second hand is that we gain knowledge about climate change and learn inhabitants, so we need to learn that, what they can do about it, what can we do about the climate change process, how can we um, decrease it, well, that's something we should think about. So the question is, what is climate adaptation? Well, we have to adapt to climate change, and that means that we have to take action to adjust uh, to its present and future impact. So we have to move around and think what is going to happen to us in the future, and how can we live with it? By changing ways of living, of course. And uh, the Euro European Union has a budget, 20% of the budget has been reserved to take measures against climate change, but you can ask yourself, is this enough? Because if you look at the map on the right, you will notice that there are enormous areas with potential environmental problems because of climate change. Uh, look at the north of Spain and uh, uh, Greece and the south of Italy, Italy and the southern part of France. The Netherlands, of course, is red as well because we are below the sea level. You see it in the north, so Scandinavia has a big problem as well. So the European Union has to invest and they invest in durable energy. That is one of the key things that they are doing now because they want to reduce the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. Great, that works, but it is expensive. They have to create new energy infrastructure and that is something which goes very, very slow. Um, in the Netherlands, the energy network is full. That means that new companies can't get connected to the grid. That means that they won't have a power supply. Even uh, newly built homes can have problems with that, so there are finished houses which do not have electricity yet and no water yet because it's not available. And of course when we are building um, houses, buildings, all kinds of things, infrastructure, we have to wonder whether it has anything um, to do with climate change. So we have to adapt um, the changing climate to the projects that we are doing nowadays. So there are many things that we have to think about during those kinds of well, processes. And of course, climate change has an impact on economic um, sources as well. Um, tourism, agriculture. And if you look at this map, you see that the southern part of Spain and Portugal and Italy and Greece and France, you have enormous problems because of climate change on the economical part. That means that they will lose money because of the fact that, for example, tourists will not come anymore there because of, well, the rising temperature, the extreme weather, less water availability, all that kind of things. I hope that you got an image now of what the implications of climate change are for Europe because there's a lot going on nowadays and it changes the way we are living and actually we have to think about that. How can we change our way of living? Just to stay alive of course because we are not changing something without being able to do the things that we like but how can we change our lives a little bit? just to emit less CO2 and other greenhouse gases and what helps us to remain safe because if you think about it in the future there's a possibility that the lower parts of the Netherlands will be inhabitable. I mean like the, the, the province of 
uh, of Flavorland. Could it exist in about 50 years? We don't know, but it depends on the amount of sea level rise in future. We will see what happens. But in the meantime, we should think about what can we do to decrease possible problems.